Hi everybody, welcome to the Bible Summary Series, where I'm taking the Old Testament and summarizing starting from where God created the universe and ending with the prophet Malachi, who lived 400 years before the birth of Jesus Christ. Today, we are starting in Genesis chapter 9. After Noah and his family left the ark, God told them, be fruitful and multiply. He also told them that the animals, birds, and fish of the sea would fear them, and they could eat freely from any of the animals. But he warned them, you must never eat any meat that still has the lifeblood in it. Then God made a covenant with Noah and his family and promised that he would never again destroy the whole earth with a flood. As a sign of his covenant, he placed a beautiful rainbow in the sky. As time went on, Noah tilled the land and planted a vineyard. From his grapes, he made wine. One day, Noah drank the wine until he became drunk and was uncovered inside his tent, which means He wasn't wearing any clothes. Ham, his youngest son, came along and peered into the tent and saw his father's indecent state. Instead of covering him, he ran off to tell his brothers the juicy news. However, when Shem and Japheth heard this, they took a robe and carefully walked backward into their father's tent without turning their heads to avoid accidentally seeing anything, and they covered up their father. Later on, after Noah woke up, he heard what Ham had done, and he cursed him. Cursed be Canaan, he will be the lowest of servants to his brethren. But blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan will be his servant. God will expand Japheth's territory, and he will share the prosperity of Shem, and Canaan will be his servant. After this, the Bible says that Noah lived for 350 years after the flood. And finally, at the age of 950 years old, he finally passes away. In Genesis 10, we read about the descendants of Shem, Ham, and Japheth, including the names of their sons and grandsons. Among the notable offspring was Nimrod, the son of Cush, who was the son of Ham. Nimrod was a mighty hunter before the Lord. In fact, he was so famous, people would say, This man is like Nimrod, the greatest hunter in the world. As time went on, all the descendants of Noah journeyed to the east and settled on a plain in the land of Shinar. There they had a brilliant idea. Let's make bricks, they said, and harden them with fire. Come, let's build a city and a tower whose top will reach into the heavens and let us make a famous name for ourselves so we won't be scattered across the earth. So the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the descendants of Noah were building. Behold, he said, the people are united and all speak the same language. After this, nothing they imagine to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language. Then they won't be able to understand each other when they speak. And that is what the Lord did. He confused their languages so they couldn't understand one another anymore. In their confusion and mayhem, the people scattered across the whole face of the earth and they stopped building the city. That's why we call the city the city of Babel, because Babel means a confused noise made by a number of voices. From one of those groups of people that scattered, we read a long genealogy that leads to the birth of Abram, whom we know today as Abraham. Abram was a descendant of Shem, and Abram's father was a man named Terah. Terah had three sons, Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran had a son named Lot, but Haran died before his father Terah. When Abram and Nahor grew up, they got married. Abram married Sarai, his half sister, while Nahor married Milcah, the daughter of his brother Haran. However, Sarai was barren. She had no children. After a while, Terah took his whole family, including Abram and Sarai, and left Ur of the Chaldees. He headed towards Canaan, but stopped in a place called Haran, which was about 550 miles northwest of Ur, and settled there. Terah lived 205 years altogether, and he died in Haran. In Genesis chapter 12, the Lord tells Abram, 
Leave your country and your relatives and go to the land I show you, and I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make your name famous. I will bless those that bless you and curse those that curse you, and through you all families of the earth will be blessed. So Abram obeyed and left his home in Haran behind at the age of seventy-five, accompanied by Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his nephew, along with all his wealth, his livestock, and all the people in his household. They headed for the land of Canaan. When they arrived, Abram set up camp at a place called Shechem beside the oak of Moreh. There the Lord appeared to Abram and promised him, I will give this land to your descendants. Afterwards, Abram traveled to several more locations until a famine struck the land, so he decided to go down into Egypt. But before they entered Egypt, he said to Sarai, his wife, Listen, I know that you are a beautiful woman, so when the Egyptians see you, they will say, This is his wife, and then they will kill me so they can have you. Please tell them you are my sister so they will spare my life and treat me well. And sure enough, when Abram arrived in Egypt, everyone noticed how beautiful Sarai was. In fact, when the palace officials saw her, they sang her praises to Pharaoh, and Sarai was taken into his palace for the purpose of marriage. Then Pharaoh gave Abram lots of gifts because of her, camels, donkeys, cattle, goats, sheep, and male and female servants. But the Lord was not pleased. He sent terrible plagues on Pharaoh and his whole household because of Sarai, Abram's wife. So Pharaoh, he summoned Abram and said to him angrily, What have you done to me? Why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister? So I might have taken her to me as wife. Now then, here is your wife. Take her and get out. Then Pharaoh commanded his men to escort Abram, along with his wife and all his possessions, out of the country of Egypt.